Let me ask Mr. Berlin a, a question here. And, and Don't miss the Berlin. <laughs> let me ask Don't Michael on something here. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> all right. Earlier, well, before we were recording, you were talking about how the uh, exclamation point was supposed to change. Yeah. So tell us all about that idea. Well, the original concept was that as Bubsy would run and see something or encounter something that he had no prior experience with, like a woolly or something else, like a car. His exclamation point would flash and change to a question mark. So you would get the idea like, hey, he doesn't know what this is. Better be careful. It was supposed to be a communication to the player about what the experience was for the character. There was a lot of stuff that had to go by the wayside as a result of time demands, memory issues with the, the cartridges, which is a whole nother story. You don't want me to get into cartridges. And I don't. Uh, no. And, okay. I guess and, I don't. All right, go ahead. Well, okay, I'll do it if you want. Okay, I do. Um, <laughs> Sega owned a copyright on the cartridge for the Sega Genesis. In order to ship a product on the Sega Genesis, you had to pay Sega a royalty. All right. And they had to create it in China. So if you wanted to ship a product that cost, pick a number, $70, $14 of that had to go to Sega as a royalty for having the copyright on the Genesis ROM. In addition, you had to pay Sega an additional $30 for making the ROM. So you were ended up with Sega's charge for making the ROM as well as Sega's copyright on on the boot ROM. Okay? Okay, I'm not hearing very much profit out of this. No, exactly. <laughs> so Accolade said, we're going to take this guy who's a brilliant programmer. We're going to put him in a white room. No windows. No contact. And he's going to reverse engineer the ROM. And his name is Tim Wilson. And he is a brilliant human being. And he currently works for Electronic Arts. So Tim reverse engineered the Sega ROM. As a result of reverse engineering it, <coughs> with no contact, literally no contact in Accolade, we could contract with China to make the ROMs at a very minimal cost without paying Sega anything. So in order to do that, they had to both bet everything they had on Tim's ability to reverse engineer the ROM and winning the lawsuit against Sega in the San Francisco courts and being able to produce the ROMs. And they needed something strong enough to do that with, or there was no point in risking everything in it. Thus Bubsy. Thus Bubsy. So that's why Bubsy is really significant. Everything else is interesting and fine and fun and <laughs> you know, it's it's a great product, and I love them. A lot of people love them, but they don't know the real significance behind Bubsy. And that was Al Miller, the then owner of Accolade, bet the company on Bubsy. And I was literally moved by it at the time and thought, Wow, if it was me, I don't think I would do it. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, Al was, um, he was a, a real rebel. And I think he deserved a, he deserves a place in the Bubsy archive because he was an original Activision employee 
And he and a bunch of others, Steve Cartwright, um, Bob Miller, um, but I'm sorry, Bob, um, boy, I can't remember his name. I'm sorry, Bob. Um, he and three others, they left Activision to form their own company called Accolade, and they were started on Activision. So he was a gutsy player. And I think he deserves some credit for it. And um, eventually, he threw the dice and said, okay, we'll go for this. That is awesome. That's the real story behind how Bubsy happened.